You know, it was a couple of weeks ago, one morning, I was sitting in my office, and I was contemplating all the equipment I had to bring to my daughter's softball game that night, because I'm her coach. And in that moment, I realized something. The Sheridan family had to buy a pickup truck. And with this new goal, I did what we all do now when we have a problem or need. I went to the source of all light, truth, and knowledge. Yes, I went to the internet. And when I went to the internet, I arrived somewhere where some of you may have arrived before. If you can't see this, this is a web page from CarMax. Have you heard of CarMax before? Pretty unique company. And there's something very special about this image. But I first want to ask you a question. When you hear the words used car salesman, how do you feel? Negative, right? And why do you feel negative? Because this is an industry that's been doing things the wrong way for a long darn time. And CarMax themselves, they realized this. And they said, you know what? This is messed up. We're tired of doing it this way. It's dumb. And we're going to change it. And that's why, with CarMax, what they did is they started a process of buying cars very different, a no-haggle price. Instead of saying, no, you've got to come to the lot, no, here's the price. Instead of saying, there's no guarantees, you have a five-day money-back guarantee. Five days for a used car. You have this incredible checklist of all these things to make it certified. You have all these photos that you can see the car with. And me, as just the father that needed a pickup truck, I saw this web page. And a few hours later, I was driving out of that lot with that very pickup truck. I didn't look at another website. I didn't look at another car. I didn't go to another dealership. And the question is why? I was just a consumer. And I was just looking for an honest car from an honest company at an honest price. CarMax is changing the way we all see buying a used car. This honesty is changing an entire industry. And it's really, really fascinating. Let's look at this one. You might not see it very well from your seat. This is pretty neat. What's special about this photo right here? You might have all seen it before. Yes, it's a menu from McDonald's. And yes, these are value meals. But there's something very interesting about this photo. If you can't see it, it's found right here. It's the calories of the sandwiches. Has there been any industry over the last five years that's been attacked more for the irresponsibilities than the fast food industry? much of which has been done here on this very stage. And instead of fighting the tide, what has McDonald's now done? They said, you know what? They're right. And why don't we be different? Why don't we embrace truth? And so instead, they are showing what's in their food. And because they're doing that, they're changing people's perception of the way we now see the fast food industry in McDonald's themselves. And they're doing more. And the question I have is, why don't more businesses do just this? Why don't they embrace this truth and this transparency? I'll tell you why. And because we're on the subject of fast food, I'll just stick with it. This is the reason. What's that right there? Go ahead and say it. It's the Big Mac. And there's something very unique about the Big Mac, isn't it? Yes, that right there. It's the secret sauce. Ah, yes, the secret sauce. Here's the problem with most individuals and businesses. They think they have a secret sauce when in reality it's nothing but Thousand Island dressing. <laughs> it's true. It's true. But you don't have to take my word for it. Just ask McDonald's. McDonald's of Canada has done something amazing in this approach to be so honest and be so real. They started Our Food, Your Questions. And they said, you can ask us any question you want, and we'll answer it. And one such question came from Evan from Toronto. And he said, what's the secret Big Mac sauce? Uh-oh. This is the moment of truth, right? This is like Colonel Sanders and that secret recipe for KFC. This is the Coca-Cola syrup. How do you think 
they responded. This is how they responded. Our answer. Hey, Evan, it's not quite a secret, but it's the signature sauce we dress our Big Mac with. Instead of going deeper into it in text, just take a look at this video from our executive chef, Dan Coudreau, showing us how to make a Big Mac at home, including the secret sauce. They made a darn video and showed them how to do it. Now tell me, do you think McDonald's is worried that Evan is going to invite all of his buddies over and then all of a sudden have a Big Mac convention at home? <laughs> it isn't going to happen, is it? Because in reality, Evan doesn't want to make a Big Mac with secret sauce. He just wants to know how they do what they do. And that's the way we think as consumers. We just want to know how they do what they do. Your customers want to know what you do, how you do, the way you do. Very, very amazing. You know, there's so much more to this because sometimes people think this is just about big industries that are changing the perception of who they are, like used cars or like fast food. I say no. I used to be, before I was a marketing guy, I was a pool guy. In fact, still today, I'm a silent partner in a company called River Pools out of Virginia. And we start in 2001, and we do fiberglass swimming pools. That's one of our pools right here near DC. And things were going pretty well up until about 2008. And we all know what happened in 2008. Bad day for pool guys, let me tell you, because the economy crashed. The housing market went with it, and so did luxury spending. And then all of a sudden, we were in big, big trouble. By January of 2009, my company went through three straight weeks of being overdrawn in our bank account. I had 16 employees at the time, and it was the hardest time of my life. Extremely stressful. We really didn't know what to do. And as I talked with my business partners, we decided to do one thing. We said, why don't we do differently than it's ever been done before in this industry? Why don't we just answer all those questions we've gotten over the years about what it is that we do? Why don't we become the Wikipedia of fiberglass pools? And so we did just that. Any question, positive or negative, we answered it on our website. Things like, how much does a fiberglass pool cost? Of course you can't say that, right? You've got to have them come to the lot and see the car. No. We answered the question. Or what are the problems with fiberglass pools? The problems with their own stuff, and we're honest, and we said, you know what? A fiberglass pool might not be for you, and here's why. And something really amazing happened when we started to answer all these questions so honestly. People believed us, and the trust grew, and because the trust grew, the traffic grew as well. And two years later, River Pools became the most trafficked swimming pool website in the world. And it still is to this day. We're literal. Thank you. I like you. We're literal digital David in the land of Goliaths. We're killing them. All because we see ourselves as teachers. I was sharing this very same story I'm sharing with you right now a few weeks ago. Actually, I guess it was about two months ago now in Dallas, Texas. And after I was done... I had this gentleman come up to me. He was an employee of the New York Times. And he said, Marcus, this is really, really fascinating, this whole honest approach to business and answering all these questions regardless if it's good or it's bad. I think I might want to do a story on this. I didn't think anything of it until a few days later I talked to a New York Times reporter for about an hour and a half. The conversation just kept going and going. He asked more and more questions. And then a few days later I got a call. There was a, there was a photographer coming down. He wanted to take a picture of me at my swimming pool company. And then a week later, on the cover of the business section of the New York Times appeared this photo right here. Some goofy guy with a laptop in front of a fiberglass pool. Now here's the irony of what happened. If you can't see the title, this is what it says. A revolutionary marketing strategy. Answer customers' questions. Oh, dang, ain't that something new? But the crazy thing is, most don't do this. Most don't do this. 
What's so fascinating about this is for the next three days, this was the number one emailed and shared story in the entire business section of the New York Times. And over the next month, I got thousands and thousands of visitors to my website. And people just started saying to me, Marcus, you did with this company exactly what I have felt for a long time that I should be doing as well. This transparent approach to business. I love it and I want to do it myself. Because you know, for a long time we've had a problem. For about two decades, we almost went through the dark ages of business, didn't we? And we got ourselves in a little bit of trouble because of it. But now, there is a new movement afoot. My question for you this day is, which one of these new groups are you? Are you a truth hoarder, holding it all in, not sharing any of it, thinking you have a secret sauce when you don't? Are you the teacher, embracing openness and just giving it away? To me, this is the essence of the honest economy. And as you leave here today, and we've had such a cool experience here, I'm going to leave you with one challenge, that you allow truth and transparency to change everything. Because I know that it will. Are you with me?